Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel H and E Life. My name is Dr. Cindy Wong, and today I am going to continue my Pathology 101 series. Last time I started talking about colon polyps. Now I'm going to pick up where I left off. So let's just get started. Okay, so let's move on to the next polyp. It is not as common as a hyperplastic polyp or as a tubular adenoma, but it kind of depends on the location in which you practice. Along the West Coast and areas with high Asian populations, you might see this polyp more frequently than the statistical U.S. average. What this is, is a sessile serrated polyp, or what people used to call it is a sessile serrated adenoma. And if you read the most up-to-date WHO, they kind of call it a sessile serrated lesion. So going forward, I'm just going to call it a sessile serrated polyp or short-term SSP. And honestly, it doesn't really matter. It kind of all says the same thing. So the reason I don't like to use the term sessile serrated adenoma is these polyps actually have no low-grade dysplasia. So the defining features of a sessile serrated polyp is basically on the surface, it kind of resembles a hyperplastic polyp. You kind of have this overgrowth, hyper maturated looking appearance with abundance of mucin and goblet cells. And then also kind of like a hyperplastic polyp, you have nice ser serrations. You look at this, it's having serrations. The feature that differentiates a sessile serrated polyp from a hyperplastic polyp is looking at the base. So a hyperplastic polyp has the frilliness on the surface, the dilation, and the serrations, and it's usually limited to the upper half of the polyp or might extend into the lower one-third, but a sessile serrated polyp must have this feature, which is the serrations extending all the way to the basal layer. So here we have a thin wisp of muscular mucosae, so we could imagine that the rest of it, which is not seen here, kind of just overlaps at the base. Usually a hyperplastic polyp, it just forms you know, it just become a normal gland at the base. But in a sessile serrated polyp, you have the serration extending all the way to the base. And it can be seen as a variety of things. So it could be seen as uh, just plain old, very wide dilation, or you could see that it is also serratedly dilated at the base. Most reliable finding of a sessile serrated polyp is lateral horizontal growth along the basement membrane. So you can see that this is a true gland and it's growing laterally instead of what normal colon glands should be is like a tubular uh, vertical growth. So this is completely abnormal. And the only time you'll see this kind of lateral growth is in a sessile serrated polyp. Another description of lateral uh, growth is depends on if you get it in good cut section is what we call booting. And here are the same crib, you know, they're just not cut in the right plane. But if you imagine this extended all the way down here, what you can see is here's the leg and here's like the ankle area. And then this horizontal dilation causes a boot-like structure. The other feature we can see is anchoring. So if you can imagine this laterally gross thing, this is actually going to meet up with it. So if this was from the surface, came to here, and then it laterally grow on both sides, if you can connect it, this kind of looks like an anchor like this. The other feature of an SSP is that these are commonly located in the right colon. And in the right colon, it's commonly found in the cecum and the ascending colon, as well as they're generally pretty large, at least 0.6 up to, I've seen like two CMs of sessile serrated polyps. And these are re relatively large and usually hyperplastic polyp doesn't get that large. So now let's go back to what I originally said, why I don't like calling a sessile serrated adenoma is because even though these polyps are associated with uh, progression to carcinoma, these polyps itself do not have surface epithelial dysplasia. As you can see, maybe down here it's hyperchromatic and it's ugly, but it's kind of located towards the base and that's okay. Uh, that's where things kind of grow. And then you can see as it matures, all of this is very, it's very, very small nuclei and it has great maturation with all of this mucin. Uh, there's actually no epithelial dysplasia here. So I feel like calling a sessile serrated adenoma is kind of like a misnomer. So I prefer sessile serrated polyp. That said, it can develop low-grade dysplasia. And when that happens, you kind of have these features extending all the way to the surface. 
at least that's for me, will be called a sesalcery polyp with cytologic dysplasia. And we don't really grade the dysplasia as high grade or low grade. The fact that it's there is a very bad sign. And now lastly, I want to end on this polyp here. I personally find it super cute. So what we see here is a traditional sessile serrated adenoma. Hey was saying serrated adenoma because this truly has low grade dysplasia. So as you can see here, you have elongated, enlarged, uh, pseudostratified nuclei. So this meets criteria for low grade dysplasia. On low appearance, a villiform look, you also overall look at it as very pink. So compared to a plano adenoma, you can see that it's very much dark compared to the background. All that pink is the cytoplasm, and most of the cells that occupy here are mostly nuclei. Whereas if we come back here, you can see that there is overall very pink. And when you go on higher power, you can see there's just abundance, abundance of pink cytoplasm. The other thing you want to be able to call it serrated is that you have to see serrations. So you see how there are these serrations happening within this thing, within this um, lesion. Here's a nice area of serration. Here's a nice area of serration. Here's a nice area of serration. And in addition to the serration, of course, you still have the low-grade dysplasia. Now, the Third thing that you kind of need to make this diagnosis is this actual peninsula nuclear features of low-grade dysplasia uh, compared to, say, here, which looks more like a traditional tubular anoma kind of dysplasia. These dysplastic cells are very, very thin. They're called pencilate thin, and they look very pseudostratified. And another common feature is there is actually a little uplifting from the base, whereas kind of more traditional adenoma, most of the nuclei hover at the basement membrane. Whereas when you have the traditional serrated part, you see that here's the basement membrane, uh, you can see actually the little fine collagen for the basement membrane is the pencilate nuclei that kind of comes off of the basement membrane. Okay, and really just having those three features, you could get, you could just call this a traditional steroid adenoma. This is not a technically a defining feature, but it's a helpful feature, which is called atopic cribs. There's other terms for it, but basically it's referring to something like this and like this. So what that means is right now, let's just look at this villi, right? So this is a true villi. And then along the villi, you can see that there's kind of this budding happening into the length of the villi. And these budding is kind of forming a crypt. It looks like it's a crypt that like it would be like, it looks like this, but it's actually happening just along the villus. And these are ectopic crypts. Now, the feature of serrated adenoma, once again, I said it has to have serrations, but the serrations are very unique in the traditional serrated adenoma, which for now on, I'm just going to say TSA because it's such a long word. So the serrations in the TSA has to be very thin. They have to be very thin and very angulated. So it has to be thin and angulated, thin and angulated. Whereas in comparison to the serrations that you see in a hyperplastic polyp or in a sessile serrated polyp, they're kind of, they're not that thin. They kind of have a nice dilated lumen and they kind of have the branches. The way I kind of help describe it in a, in a way that I think most people understand is this kind of looks like a starfish. It has a body in the middle. Oh, I mean, when I say the lumen looks like a starfish. So it has a central body in the middle and then it has the little legs that it spreads. So when we come back here to the TSA, you can see that the serrations, they don't, the lumen doesn't have much of a body. It kind of just forms these long, elongated serrations. And how I like to describe it, serrations of a TSA reminds me of a spiny starfish. These are starfish with a tiny little central body and really long, long legs. Key features, of course, you have low-grade dysplasia with this elongated pseudostratified nuclei, you have the abundance pink cytoplasm, and then you have very sharp angulated serrations. And that's what that's it. And there, of course, are more, more fine details into all of these, such as high-grade dysplasia, so, such as really bad high-grade dysplasia that invades into lamina propria, which some places do not define 
as anything but high grade dysplasia, where other places call it intramucosal adenocarcinoma. And then, of course, then you have polyps with adenocarcinoma developing into it. You know, it just goes on and on. Polyps are very interesting. And if you find these things really cute, then maybe it means that you will be a good GI pathologist in the future. Anyways, so that's it for my video. I'm going to stop it here. And next time, I will talk about more benign findings in the colon, and I will focus on inflammatory bowel disease. All right, please like and subscribe. And of course, I always love to hear your questions and comments below. And I will see everyone next time. Bye.